Good evening, brothers and sisters. Wow, this is an exciting time. Um, I know it's been a while. Uh, as I've said in the past, um, I don't do videos unless I feel really prompted by the Holy Spirit, so I am prompted. Um, before I go any further, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, this is for me, guys, this week, this coming Thursday, Friday, is the highest watch we've had. Um, I've been watching along with you guys all through um, what when the Jews celebrated Passover and we all celebrated Resurrection Day um, this past couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, I was certainly watching and waiting, um, certainly paying attention to all the current events. And, um, yeah, but... As many of you may know from some of my previous videos, I kind of agree with Ricardo and Gebti and some of the others that, you know, the Jewish calendar was a month ahead. And we're still technically in 2022, according to um, scripture, where, you know, the, the first month is, uh, according to Moses, the month they came out of Egypt when the sun was in Aries. And I don't need to get into all that right now because I have limited time and there's a lot of really encouraging things to get to you guys. But uh, basically, long story short, I think Passover hasn't happened yet. And um, yeah, so we shall see. Uh, but what I did want to say was one of the things I was talking to with Kevin and Michael and um, Tony about, Kevin and Mike and Tony, um, was basically, you know, when this Passover passed, um, and there was kind of among some of the Watchmen community, everyone was disappointed, right? I mean, even though I thought it was a month early, I too was disappointed. But I got a dream from the Lord about a month ago now. So it was a couple of weeks before um, East, before people celebrated Easter and Resurrection Day and Passover and so forth. Um, and I didn't share it. I didn't do the video, as you would be able to tell. <laughs> And the reason was I was sitting on it and I was just really praying through, you know, all of the dreams and visions and words and revelations that not only myself, but thousands of us, thousands of believers around the globe have gotten, right? And I think you would agree with me that, you know, if the Holy Spirit is truly giving all these visions, as it says in the word, he would do, pour out on all flesh, right? Um... I got to a place where it's not that I wasn't disappointed that we were still here. I mean, certainly I'm ready to go as much as the next guy, but I, I did get to a place where I wasn't doubting what he has already shown us. I wasn't doubting the dreams he's given us, the visions he's given us, the words he's given us, the revelations he's given us. And I say that on behalf of all of you guys that are getting dreams and revelations and so forth, because... And this was the key. This is this is kind of like what unlocked it all for me. And that is, I feel like that's part of the watchman relationship with our Lord. As he is, as we are walking with him, as he is walking us through this, this journey of the last days, which we are truly in, and, and we are that generation, guys. Um, you know, if there are if there were scripture to be written about these last days, you know, it would have all you guys in it, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, th this is, these are the volumes that are about us, you know? And so this particular relationship, this particular calling that this generation has, I believe we are seeing that manifest in these dreams and visions and words and revelations. And I think if there was any kind of, quote, you know, mistake that was made or misinterpretation or misunderstanding is just simply that, that when we got a particular dream or a certain word or whatever, we thought, this is the day, when really it was the Lord taking us through his journey. You know, and in um, Song of Solomon, we have uh, the lover and the beloved, right? And she, there's, there's this, there, there becomes this section where she's searching for the beloved, right? And she's going throughout the town, and she actually mentions the watchmen and how they, they, they wounded her, actually, is what it says. Um, but we have this example of the lover searching for the beloved. And so 
you know, it's like when we look in one particular place or one particular day or one particular moed, that's correct. We're doing what he wants us to do. We're looking, we're going to where he may be or, or, you know, going to where he may appear. And just because he hasn't appeared yet, just because he hasn't arrived yet, doesn't mean all those times were wrong. It just means we were watching like we were supposed to. We were interpreting the dreams, interpreting the visions and everything else as part of that relationship, as part of him saying, yes, I'm speaking. Yes, I'm calling you. Yes, this is, you know, this is the path I'm taking you on. And so once I started kind of viewing these past several years that we've all been watching so intently through that lens and through that understanding, it really gave me a peace, honestly. And I pray it does the same for you. And I kind of meant to make this video, you know, pretty much a couple days after Resurrection Day, just to give you, you know, those of you who were despairing hope that um, we're on the right path, we're on the right track. And um, now I believe we could very well be days away. Um, we might not be, you know, it might be where, it might be just the next step on the path where we are interpreting his signs and his wonders and, and his numbers and dates and everything else. It's all part of his story history, his, his story. It's all part of his story. So it's just a matter of, is it the actual day where it all culminates? It could very well be. So let me start with the dream. And again, I got several things to get through here. So I'm just going to keep talking rapid fire. Um, so the dream that I had about a month ago, I could go back through and see the actual date. Maybe I will, maybe I'll post that in the comments, but very simple and short dream. I was on the beach and out in the ocean, there was this huge tall tower. I mean, not like anything man-made that we've ever seen in the middle of an ocean. I mean, it would be like as if the, you know, Empire State Building was in the middle of the ocean, that kind of height. So I'm with some friends from college, and they're like, you know, basically like daring me to swim out and climb to the tower and look down. So I'm like, all right, I'll go check it out. So um, I go to the top of this tower, and I'm climbing, and it's, you know, pretty easy to get to the top. When I get up to the top, it's way high, and I look down, and um, I wasn't going to jump because of the height, first of all, but then I saw these huge fish, three really big fish. And I mean, I used to be a fisherman back in the day when I was in the southeast to catch largemouth bass and that kind of thing. Now, I mean, this is the ocean, so you don't have largemouth bass, but they were definitely as if it was a largemouth bass or something that was the size of a, you know, huge sailing vessel. I mean, really big, but it was, they were not whales, okay? They were fish. And so the only thing that was spoken to my mind while I'm up there, totally random out of the blue, was, aha, it really was a fish that swallowed Jonah, not a whale. Come back down from the tower, that's the end of the dream. Um, it, it had all the harm, hallmarks of a dream from the Lord for me, but I didn't necessarily have the interpretation until I mentioned it to my fellow Watchmen brothers on our text chain, and Kevin immediately got the interpretation. He was like, the reason the tower was so tall is because you were in heaven in God's perspective, looking down from his perspective, and the ocean was the ocean of stars. And then he sent me a screenshot, and in that screenshot, it had the two Pisces fish and Cetus in it. And he was like, Did this looked like anything that you saw. And it was, when I tell you guys, it was the exact kind of angle of the fish and everything in my dream. That's what it was. And everything like locked into place. At least the interpretation locked into place. But the one thing that I was praying on that we were kind of been discussing for several weeks now is, what did he mean by that? Um, so Jonah really was swallowed by a fish, not a whale. What does that mean in relation to the dream? Because that seems to be like the key. Um... And what's interesting is in the Hebrew, the word is fish. The, in, in the Hebrew, the story of Jonah, if you go to the original Hebrew, it's fish, not whale. So I think factually speaking, it probably was a fish, not a whale. But what, is, what does that do for us in this moment? Um, and, and please, as, as always, maybe while I'm recounting this, the Holy Spirit might give you even, even deeper revelation. So please share it in the comments. But um, here's the thing. Uh, Kevin went to Stellarium, and he showed that the moon, um, in several past years, 
around this time of year has gone straight through Cetus, Cetus, Cetus. Um, and, um, but this year was in Pisces, not Cetus. And so um, that was significant with regard to a fish that swallowed Jonah, not a whale, but it doesn't stop there. Now fast forward to one of the reasons why I think this week is a huge week, and that is, I mentioned Ricardo. We know that the whole, if you've been following the Watchmen community, you understand the Shemitah cycles. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just building upon what so many amazing Watchmen have already put out there for you guys to see. Gevti and um, Dr. Barry, certainly. Um, so that is that the Great Tribulation is probably a Shemitah cycle, right? Um, and if it's to start in 2023, I personally believe 2023 hasn't started until this new sighting of the new moon this month, okay? That should occur in Israel on the 20th, 21st for us, okay? Which is this coming Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday. And what's amazing is, if you've, if you've been watching Gepti or some of the others, there's this hybrid solar eclipse that's taking place on Thursday. And those are so rare, they only happen once every 10 years. So if you do the math, since the Revelation 12 sign that kind of woke up the Watchmen community, and since we've been watching, one of these hasn't happened. So we've had all the blood moons, we've had the Revelation 12 sign, certainly. We've had many signs and wonders on the earth, and heavens, earthquakes, geopolitical stuff, we've had all that. But this is the first hybrid solar eclipse like this. And... It got me thinking about Joel 2.31, because what happens is, apparently the moon casts a shadow on the earth and makes parts of the earth dark, okay? So the moon will be, sun will be dark and the moon turned to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord, right? So this is happening this Thursday, slash Friday, this Thursday, um, and on the 20th. And what's um, amazing is just tonight, Kevin sent me a screenshot again of Stellarium, with the eclipse, and when the sun and the moon are right in the eclipse moment, they're in Pisces. Not, not Cetus, not the whale, in the fish. So that, that really gave me an amazing kind of confirmation uh, of just, again, am I saying that's when the rapture is going to occur? Not saying that, but I'm saying it's certainly... I think a step in the journey and could be the end of the journey. And if you look at all the other signs pointing to this week, we have the end of the Muslim holiday Ramadan. We have, which they're saying is stuff could go down with Israel and Iran that day. Um, we have uh, so, so many other things, okay? Oh, one of the things that Kevin mentioned is 420. For being the, by the way, I joked, you know, ha have all the rappers had it right this whole time that 420 is when you get high. Yeah, I know, but getting high is a predictive programming. Um, I, th I thought that was interesting, um, and we had a funny laugh about that. But he pointed out that 4 is the Hebrew letter Dalit, and 20 is the Hebrew letter Resh. And so... Dalit is door, Resh is new beginning. So door to a new beginning, to which the Holy Spirit kind of built upon that with us. And I was like, well, if we're transliterating Hebrew and English, where Hebrew has no vowels, vowels and English does, D and R could very well just mean door, as in the door that John saw into heaven, you know, that window. So, um, which brings me to another really encouraging thing that happened. My neighbor, who I've, I've been um, watching with and We've been kind of just encouraging one another uh, over the course of since I've since I've lived here, and so I, I've mentioned a lot of my dreams and and revelations to her. And she and her husband were over here with my my wife and I having dinner a couple months ago, and she said, "Will you know I had a dream, and in the dream, this basically black." cold type window opened in the clouds in the middle of the day and I said to you is this what you've been talking about Will is this what we've been watching for and I was like yes this is it it's, this is happening so um, that was another really encouraging dream that happened um, so 
so yeah, I say all this to say, um, this Thursday and Friday are, you know, as we always say, with each pass, with each watch day that passes, the next one's even a uh, higher watch. So for me, this is a huge watch time period, this Thursday and Friday. Um, I know I'm forgetting some of the other reasons because there's just so many. Oh, the whole, the whole Hitler birthday situation and Esther uh, kind of scenario and with this eclipse and with Hitler being a type of Antichrist. And we know that, um, you know, once the rapture happens, the witnesses are going to show up and explain to people what happened and the Antichrist is going to be revealed. So um, that is also, you know, a huge potential for this week. Um, and, and what I've been what I've been mentioning as well is that, because you know me, I I wholeheartedly don't believe the tribulation's begun. I love what Watch One Sixty Five says that if you have to ask if you're in the tribulation, you're not. And we have very specific um, factual information about the four horsemen, where you know a day's wage is for a loaf of bread. That has not happened. I firmly believe we're on the way to that, and we'll be there probably before the year's out. But we're not there yet. Um, same thing with like certain percentages of the population passing away from war and famine and pestilence it hasn't happened yet, right? So if we're not in the tribulation, then there's when you do the math with the amount of time the witnesses do their ministry, um, you know, to say that it's already begun, the witnesses would need to be here doing their thing, you know, if, if the tribulation has started, and so that really throws off the timing of everything. So do I believe, if you're asking me, Will, do I think, me personally, that 2022, we're still in 2022, until the sighting of this new moon this week? Yes. That will begin 2023, and if that is to begin the Great Tribulation, then there are several things that need to happen. There are several things that just, from Scripture, need to happen to verify this. Um, now, granted, everything is already, like, at the starting gate ready to happen. So many things, like geopolitical stuff, earth stuff, heavenly stuff, it just, it, it's all ready. It's all ready to go. It's just about the father saying, go get your bride. So um, are we there? I hope so. If we're not, we'll keep watching and I'll come back on here. I actually, the Lord gave me a song as well. Um, if you've been watching